So I am wigging out because students can never answer these two important questions. One, how many times can you put a wig on a pig and make it look good? Two, how many times can you put a wig on a pig and make it look like a dog? So we are gonna get wiggy jiggy do a jig and we're gonna wig out because we are gonna be talking about wigs and hair additions. Everything from wigs, extensions, weaves, and everything else in between. So keep your hair on because we're gonna get into some hair raising facts in history. Know that wigs have been around for a lot longer than you think. Wigs are not something that is typically new or same with extensions. You know, people always assume that, oh, you know, celebrities or the Kardashians, they revolutionized extensions. They actually really didn't. Fun fact is extensions have been around just as long as wigs have. I know for a fact that back in the turn of the century, during the Edwardian era, people wanted to look like the Gibson girl who was a drawn up character and what they would do is they would buy these human hair extensions. Hair had a lot of value in the Victorian era and then in the Edwardian era it shifted to being still made into you know jewelry after someone died, but also they would take the hair on someone living and they would you know put it in a box and they would use it to um, style their hair as they see fit. A while ago, I was at an oddities antique shop. It was like an antique shop and postmortem gallery. It was really bizarre, but really cool. And they had a client who had donated her hair. Um, she was a local in the area called Mrs. Brown and she died in 2012. And I want to say she was in her 90s or so. And she, you know, was, she was definitely in her late 90s. I think it was in her 20s or 30s, she grew up, she had a bob and she actually kept her hair in case she had to make it new extensions. They actually had a lot of issues in women wearing the bobs or the flappers. Some of them would um, get their hair made new extensions, they'd make it look like they had hair. There was some really cool things I don't really talk about in the history books. But this is an important part of the, the beauty history. Know that the ancient Egyptians actually shaved their heads with bronze razors and they wore heavy black wigs to protect themselves from the sun, so the wigs had a function. In ancient Rome, women wore wigs made from the prized blonde hair of barbarians captured from the north pretty morbid way of getting her hair. Um, even though, um, here's a fun note, when you watch the movie Good Hair, you'll find out that how you harvest the hair for extensions may also be of ethical concern. We wanna make sure we're getting it from an ethical seller. And then in the 18th century England, men wore wigs called perukes to indicate they were the army, navy, or engaged in law. You will still see perukes used in the um, English law journals or the newspapers. What they'll do is they'll have a depiction of a judge wearing that classical wig. They look like giant cotton rolls and they're pretty um, dated and eccentric. We don't really see them here in the USA, but in Europe they had a lengthier history. Know that today's, um, in today's fashion world, wigs are a huge part of fashion still, so are extensions. It's a huge money maker. You can specialize in this. I've known cosmetology students that would go through the program, um, get their cosmetology license, take additional classes in wigs extensions, and they did nothing but wigs extensions. Some of them even were lucky enough to make their extensions, sell them online, which you could do if you have an Etsy store. There are so many ways to make money in this field and in this area specifically. So don't just write this off as being a short chapter. There's still so much you can learn from this and you can make a ton of money. Because remember that extensions are a luxury service as are wigs and this is where you have to be firm with your price. Hair is money, especially um, the Remy human hair, that is the gold standard. Typically clients, a lot of them are not gonna come in for wig fitting. Back in the day, it was a big thing. They would come in, they'd take their wig off, get their wig essentially dry cleaned, shampooed, reset, styled. My cosmetology teacher, who was a wealth of knowledge, she told me, um, I have to ask her more about this when I talked to her, but she said her client um, back in the 80s, uh, her husband was like some kind of famous sculptor or something, it was pretty interesting. So she actually had to hand deliver the wigs um, to the house a few times. So she'd drop her wigs off to get dry cleaned, you know, get set. The lady called the salon, and this brings up another point in the chapter where we have to teach a client how to style their hair or, you know, place it on their head. She says, you ruined my wigs, this and that. And she's on the phone, they're walking her through it, and the lady goes, ma'am, I think you have your wig on upside down. So that was always a fun story. I'm really big in the 80s, not so common now for doing wigs. When I was uh, in cosmetology school and in the cos clinic, we had a woman come in and she wanted a perm and I'm looking at her hair and I'm like, well, it's kind of like bleached and it looks a little damaged. She goes, oh, I forgot. And she yanks it right off her head and I'm like, I also had another client who comes in and she had a wig catalog. <laughs> she was really funny. 
So, but the majority of clients that have wigs are gonna go and buy them at the store. It's usually a one-time thing for a party. Some of them might come in and want you to integrate the wig into their hair. Um, I know that proms might, not proms, um, Irish dancers for like St. Patrick's Day, it's a big thing if you have um, a huge Irish population that's traditional. So there's also the opportunity to work with toupees and these are custom made and fitted. Um, and they're usually used for men because toupees are a specific hair piece. So that hair, hair clinics or hair clubs will have special stylists on hand to do that. Know that hair additions can range from your clip on hair pieces um, that salon retail, such as ponytails, chignons, bangs. You can attach a bang for the day and then take it off. You can also um, get additions such as extensions, which come in a wide variety of um, forms. And I think this book is so outdated, it doesn't even mention the tape-in method, which is pretty new. There's also the beaded and hand-tied. I myself, I am certified in um, three types of extensions: dream catcher, almost no dream catcher. I'm said innovate, not innovate. Dream catcher, illustrated beauty extensions, the hand-tied and beaded method with Jenny Jacome. She's a great educator. If you are a professional or a cost student and want to learn more, contact Jenny Jacome or look up illustrated beauty. And the other one is hair locks, which I have their swatch ring for the lesson. So know that um, manufacturer's instructions are very important. Typically when you're getting certified in extensions, you can't just go to like Salon Centric or any kind of beauty supplier and say, or even Marlowe Beauty and say, hey, I want your extensions. A lot of them don't even carry extensions. This is something like the keratin treatment you have to get separately. You'll have to get certified by that specific manufacturer's class. So just because you get like certified in dream catcher doesn't mean I can go and buy hair from another one. You have to take their class and then you're eligible to buy it. So it's like, it is a lot of money, but you have to invest in your education. It also furthers the point that this is about continuing education and all that good stuff. Know that um, wigs can be used for fun. It can also be used for people that um, have cancer or going through chemotherapy. They might have alopecia. Someone with alopecia will never grow hair because of an autoimmune disorder. Or, you know, there are some therapies that may help, but for the most part, they have to wear um, wigs if they're, they want, you know, some kind of hair. And it could be a confidence thing. So, know that there's options in this. And know um, that the book starts off by talking about the two types of wigs. There are two common types of material. There is human hair and synthetic hair, and I've mentioned this in the last chapter. Human hair is the gold standard. You want to strive for getting human hair. If it's a virgin, that's ideal because you can custom color it and there's less of a risk of damage and the piece will last a lot longer as opposed to if it's been colored before. Know that you can test the wig to see if it's human hair or synthetic and the key is the burn test. If you burn human hair, it gives off a very distinctive odor. If you burn a piece of plastic, it doesn't give off that crazy odor like human hair does and it tends to um, fall in on itself. So they tell you to pull a strand out of the wig or hair piece if you're curious. Human hair will burn slowly, giving off a distinctive odor. A strand of synthetic fiber, on the other hand, will either ball up and melt, extinguishing itself. This is a characteristic of Kinecleon, which we mentioned in the last chapter. Or it will continue to flame and burn out very quickly, typical polyester, which is a plastic. In either case, it will not give off an odor if it's synthetic. So human hair has some advantages. Um, the number one advantage of human hair, it's more realistic. You have durability, it'll last a lot longer. You're able to shampoo it, especially if it's Remy and it doesn't um, wear out. Except if it's been coated with a protein coat, I've heard that it tends to wear out a lot quicker. Also know that wigs are also big in certain cultures. So I learned this around to a, a wig expo. Um, so also another good resource, look up Karg, Mike Karg and the Karg Shear Company. It's a great class to take if you are going to the summit or travel or go to any of his classes, he's incredible. He is well respected in the Jewish community, um, so specifically certain types of Jews, especially um, acidic Jews, they tend to wear wigs, and I forgot the exact technical term for it, but in their culture, the females wear wigs, and they have special salons that service just the wigs. So get in there, you'll buy the wig piece, you'll get your wig styled and custom made. Some um, of the Jewish women I met there actually made their own business out of making and selling wigs, which I thought was incredible. So I was able to get a lot of good information about what bleaches are good for wigs and extensions because it's, it was really cool because I learned culture, but I also learned part of the trade. Also know that one of the last advantages of human hair is that it is the same styling and maintenance as natural hair. Um, it can be custom colored or permed to suit the client. It can tolerate heat from blow dryers, curling irons, and hot rolls. Just know that you don't want to start in the highest heat setting. Obviously, you can still damage a human hair wig, and then guess what? The wig goes bye-bye, it goes in the trash, and you just wasted a client's money, and they'll be mad if their wig doesn't last 
um, as if they've had wigs before and it doesn't last as the last one. So make sure you're getting a good lifespan on your product and you're taking care of it. Some disadvantages of human hair, and this is one of the biggest ones, human hair will react to the climate. So if your client gets this beautiful wig style and set and they go out where it's humid and you don't prep the hair properly, poof, it's gonna go frizzy and go back to its um, original uh, style. So we can lose curls that way. After shampooing, the hair has to be resetted. This can be a challenge if the client has to maintain their hair at home, so you wanna make sure you're educating them what you're doing, what products you're using, how they can care for the wig at home. Uh, color will oxidize um, and it will fade with exposure to light. So what that means is that unlike human hair that grows out and the color you know holds them better, on wigs it might be a little bit more porous so the color may fade. Also know that with the wigs they're gonna be in the sun a lot longer so you might get fadage in certain areas or um, as a whole and it can look really brassy. And this is why I stress the importance of when you're working with wigs or extensions, make sure you're always using demi or semi-permanent color. You're gonna extend the life of the hair a lot longer. It's not as gonna aggressive as the regular colors. Also know that the hair will break and split if it's mistreated by backcombing, um, harsh hair brushing, and excessive use of heat. If you backcomb, be very careful and be gentle. So know that um, wigs can look natural, they can be dramatic if you're doing editorial looks, they can be whimsical. They give you this crazy, crazy, crazy um, wig right here. She looks like a cotton candy. And this other one right here where it looks like she has rollers in her hair. Also know that there is um, a organization called CTFA, which is the um, Cosmetic Toiletry and Fragrance Association. In, and in 1989, they founded an organization called Look Good, Feel Better. Make sure you research that. So now the next type of wigs is gonna be synthetic hair. So know that synthetic hair has greatly improved. Um, they now have high quality synthetic hair like Connecticleon. It can be coated and it's pro it simulates a protein rich hair so you're able to curl it, heat style it with a lower heat setting. Know that synthetic hair has great value. It's very realistic, but is less expensive than human hair. Both style and texture are set into the hair. Ready to wear synthetic hair is very easy for the client to maintain at home because it stays in position. Shampooing in cold water will not change a style and will, and either will humidity. So if you get a ready to wear wig made of a good quality synthetic like Connecticleon, the client is able to get a ready to wear wig that's pre-styled and on very cold water, they're able to use a special you know cleansing product without ruining it. They can wear the wig, they can go out into a humid environment. It's not gonna ruin their hair. So that might be an advantage. So know that a lot of synthetic wigs and hair pieces and extensions are cut in according to the latest style. You can get those fancy extensions that have the raccoon tails or the coontail style, zebra stripes, checkerboards, all kinds of cool patterns. There's limitless range of colors ranging from natural to wild and fantasy. Um, and also know that the cheaper synthetic wigs and hair additions tend to be sold um, more solid in color, they're less tone on tone. The fiber is coarser if it's using a polyester blend. The higher end products have a mix of many shades containing highlights and lowlights for a natural effect or even the crazy fun colors. They'll have different tones of the color so it doesn't look like solid and cheap. Synthetic colors will not fade or oxidized even when exposed to the sun because the fiber itself is colored. As weird as it sounds, it's like a fibroplastic. Know that there are some disadvantages of synthetic hair. Um, one of them is that synthetic hair can not be exposed to extreme heat, whether it be from irons, blow jars, rollers. Some synthetic hair is coated with a protein base and it can tolerate low heat, lower than 390 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. You always wanna check with the manufacturers and perform a test strand on small sections to actually see. So if you take a small piece at the bottom of the wig underneath, not on top ever. So I'm gonna take a small section, curl it with the iron, curl it on the lowest setting. If it breaks off in the lowest setting, that's a sign that you shouldn't be styling this hair like that. Typically it'll just say it on there. Know that coloring synthetic fiber is not recommended because synthetic, um, remember synthetic hair, through it's plastic. There is no anatomy like there is in a hair cuticle, so that's not gonna lift your style. In fact, if you try to put bleach on plastic, it might even melt it to an extent or weaken it because of the high pH. Also know that because synthetic hair is so shiny, it may not look natural, it may look very fake. And if the hair is thick, it will look unnatural on a fine hair client. So if you get them this big um, solid blue wig and the client is an older lady with, and it's cut into a bob, thick bob, it's gonna look very, very fake. Know that price has a lot to do with how synthetic hair looks. Um, the most natural looking synthetic pieces can be very expensive. Not as expensive as human hair, but up there. 
I know that there's pros and cons for both human and aesthetic hair. The bottom line is that you pay for what you get. Um, don't be fooled by um, imitations. So if you decide to buy a knockoff of one of those fake Instagrams, know that ines inexpensive wigs, hair pieces, and extensions may be great for a fun moments or to practice cutting on, but in other situations they can look tacky and unattractive. Also know that um, to the average consumer, the deals at the local beauty store may look good, but that apparent deal could be a mix of animal hair and human hair. And in one washing, the wig that the client gets, or you get if you make this mistake, it can mat the wig into a big ball. The most realistic hair additions, such as those used in film work, cost thousands of dollars. So that's something to really keep in mind when you see like Broadway shows like Avita, things like that. I've talked with a um, voice coach who loves Broadway and she's been on Broadway for many years, very successful, and we were chatting about theater wigs and she says, oh, you really should get into this and learn this and I'm like, oh, I'll take, your, you know, I'll take your advice for it and you know, I was able to go with extensions and now I'm going to learn like additional stuff. Theater wigs are very expensive, they each got their own wig, they cost thousands of dollars. And that has been that way for many years. Um, your client will not necessarily need something of that grade but you must pay attention to the quality. You want to educate the client on well-made products. Remember, when you recommend a product, you put your reputation in the line. So if you don't know something, be honest and say, well, I really don't know. Why don't we try to find something together? Um, on a funny note, um, because when you work with clients, remember that some clients may be going through cancer and it might be challenging for you. So one of my really good friends, I met her after I lost one of my good friends and we called her Elvis Kathy because she was obsessed with Elvis. And I, I used to go to these like Elvis shows as a family and we met her and her family and she was a wonderful, wonderful person. So she had the most beautiful hairstyle. It was like this honey blonde shade. I still to this day cannot match it. So she told me that when she was going um, through chemo again, she was in her mid seventies when she passed. She was going through chemo in the, her, when she was like 72, she lost her hair and she decided, well, I'm gonna go get you know, a wig. I'm gonna replace my hair. It was almost like say yes to the dress, except it would have been do a jig for the wig. She sat there, they tried on every single wig in this damn store, wig after wig after wig after wig. Finally, the stylist found something that was there at the store. They put it on and it was me, her, and the, her original stylist that has been working with her for 30 years. We all look and we're like, we got it. And it was the last wig they found in that store. So be patient because you never know. Wigs have so many options and all it takes is that one style to really change a client's life for the better. And it was really cool because that hair piece was identical. You could never tell that she lost her hair. It was that incredible. And it, we've tried every piece in that store. And even like the salesperson, like the stylist that was helping us was like really nervous. So um, that is going to be that for this section. I'm going to give you guys a five minute break. When we come back, I'm going to finish up on quality and cost. And then we're going to talk more about some wigs and some methods and then hair additions.